Kevin Cosgrove. I graduated with Joel, among others, in 2001. Um, what I really, I've gotten so much ad music for people, it's very hard to condense it in two minutes. But um, I think of music for people as group therapy for musicians. And I have a, uh, you know, an old uh, a, a saying I live by, which is don't trust any group of people who don't have musical instruments. Just be suspicious. You know, there's a bunch of people together and they're not playing. You've got to wonder what they're up to. Outside of that, easy for people, um, for me, was a complete change my life like it does for so many, so many people who attend this profoundly. Um, I'd gone through so many years of playing and, and I'd actually given up playing because of all the, I couldn't pick up an instrument without, without being completely flooded with uh, negative self-talk. And, and um, it was, I saw David do a clinic and in that clinic I had two friends, one who was more uptight than me and one who was just, you know, would roll on the ground singing. And, um, and I decided I should be closer to the one who's rolling on the ground and singing completely uninhibited. And that to play music without that kind of freedom would always restrict my ability to actually do what I started out playing music for, for which is self-expression. When you're a kid and you start playing music, it's because, to, to me, music really was magic. I mean, how do you make a note? How do you do that? You know, it's just, just awe-inspiring. And truly, David's work and in, in, in the group of community music for people brought me back to that sense of, that sense of awe, you know? And it served me so, so well as a musician. I mean, I wish, you know, we always wish that, in retrospect, that I wish I'd, I'd discovered this when I was 10, obviously, it would have been helpful. But just to know that, you know, the validity, to be, vet, to, be um, to be supported with the idea of just being able to make one note and have a community that would support you to make one note, it's just ridiculous compared to, you know, when I went to uh, Berkeley out of high school, after I was there for a year, I couldn't play at all because everything I did was wrong. And I was like 17, right? So it's like holding the pick wrong, you're holding your shoulders wrong. You know, there was so many things going through my head as opposed to oh, listening, connecting. All these things they don't teach you at a good conservatory music school, right? And uh, it's amazing that you must actually get to play at a sufficient level because you have to fight your doubts all. Over, you know? And I, I later realized it takes. A, I never thought of it this way. These are people think it takes a. a, a amazing amount of courage and chutzpah to think that you can actually play something well enough to or that you know you, you'll have the time or the, or the drive to do that so i've used music for people techniques uh the last couple of years i ended up traveling the world unexpectedly my brother got sick in china and i went there and he um and i i couldn't sleep because there's a long period of time where he where it looked like he wasn't gonna live and i was um, we go out in the street and hang out and I ended up meeting all these Chinese musicians hanging out on the street. And I can't speak a word of Chinese, but they would go like, you know, they invited me to sit down, and then they're passing this instrument around. When I played it, I got to play with people in China, and uh, including, including a classical Chinese uh, ensemble, where this guy grabbed me by the shoulder and said, you know, sit down, take a chair. And I was like, well, I can't play, because you know, I'm like, well, I'm not being very musical for people about this. I have to a point, use your ear. I sit down and say, well, I'll just use my music for people techniques. And I was able to play with an orchestra in China by doing listening, playing a lot of silence, waiting for that one spot and, and, and filling it nicely. And I had the same experience when I went to Africa um, last year. I uh, got to meet a gentleman named Bob Amal who was showing me how to do a guitar part. And I got so scared. He's a very renowned musician, someone I really admire. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to blow this. He's trying to teach me, I'll never get it. And then I realized, because music for people, I don't have to get it. It makes no difference whatsoever that I should be sitting here going, like, oh my God, I'm sitting across the table from Bob Amal, someone I love, who gives a sh who gives, who gives, who cares if I ever get this right. And as soon as I gave up, it's like I've learned so much music from people, as soon as I gave up the idea of having to do it right, of course I did it, it was easy. You know, so so much I've learned about music for people is getting out of my as a musician is getting out of my own way, and I, you know, and, I, and of course it's just everyone needs a community, and the community of people here are just incredibly supportive and wonderful. So I'm blessed. Mm -hmm.